So today I wanted to talk to you about uh, flourishing education, which is what I've been doing and working on for the last seven years. And I'm really going to take you on the journey, on that journey of seven years, where in 2014 I uh, rejoined the university in the UK. Um, and to say that I was quite horrified by what I came back to is another statement. So that drove me to doing more research and to looking into why it is that we say, uh, we adults say that we want our young people to live a happy, fulfilled life. And um, we end up with instead on the ground, stressed out, overwhelmed, uh, busy and completely um, anxious young people. And I would extend to, you know, with systemically with, with that, what happens to us uh, educators as well. Um, and so I wanted to share tonight with you what my dream is for the future of education, what flourishing education is all about. So I love that John was talking a lot about the um, about nature and the connection, because I'm going to obviously do a lot of connection to nature. I think, first of all, what I would say is that shift in the system. So um, we currently and I'm going to base um, my, my research on the UK because that's where I live and I'm based um, and we have a system that is very much uh, leading to uncertainty so young people are um, afraid of change and they have a real uncertainty intolerance and they are constantly being tested and what that does when they arrive at universities it sends a message that there is real competitiveness they have to compete with others um, and it's about, you know, dog eat dog, and it's the message that we can't collaborate. And that leads to these young people very, being very, very unhappy when they arrive at university. And most importantly, that leads to the perfectionism we see at university, that fear of failure, imposter syndrome, and what I call comparatitis. So this need to compare themselves to their peers constantly negatively, rather than looking at, um, you know what how they've grown over the years and you know how how they've changed from one day to the next and so really all of this for me is the old paradigm that's the you know the this real competitiveness is the, the you know based on the economy of our grandparents and our great grandparents and i think it has no place in the future of education um because really what I saw is what I call flourishing versus languishing, languishing at university. And I think we can draw a lot from nature and return back to connecting to nature rather than thinking that we have to compete and, um, and you know, be, be top dog. And the way we do that is I'd like you to imagine that our institutions or our schools are like gardens and that in those gardens we don't want all daffodils all plants that look the same right because even if we wanted daffodils that all look the same the truth is that even daffodils in the inner field would look different in shape or color or size so the message we are sending our young people, and I guess we grew up, or I grew up with, is that we, it's not okay to be our own individual. So the first thing that I would like to see in my dream is that from a young age, we teach our children to discover what flower, plant, shrub, tree they are in the garden called life and what their fragrance is so that they can really shine and be okay with who they are in that garden and they understand their needs. And then so therefore we would foster that individual plant and flower so they would understand who they are, they would understand their needs and most importantly, they would be authentically themselves in that garden. So that's really something that really excites me at the idea of, you know, tapping not only in nature, you know, uh, looking at nature and how we can learn from nature, but also sending that message. And then what I would really like to see is, uh, you know, along my journey, what I've tried to do to help our students flourish is initially I focused on the me level, the individual well-being, saying you've got to look after yourself, right? As the plant, you've got to look after yourself. And that's true. Um, if we are a team of gardeners looking after the plant that the student is, then, of course, they have to take on the nutrients that we are providing as we nourish them right? 
But I think that's not enough. And we can't just, you know, tip that hand says, you, if a salad doesn't grow in a, in a you know, gr grow well, then you can't solely blame that salad, right? So I think this is the image also that I would use here, is that if our young people are not happy at university or in their schools, then clearly we can't just solely blame them. And we also need to move at the next level, which is the we level, the group well-being, because I, when I interact with an individual or with a group, then, you know, I affect them and they affect me. But I would also argue that we need to go higher up as well as the us level, the institutional and the societal well-being, looking at how, you know, the environment uh, young people or we are in may not be conducive to our well-being, in which case, you know, rather than saying to the individual, um, you know, go out and do, um, I don't know, mindfulness, I've got nothing against mindfulness, I practice that every day, or, you know, go, go for a walk, um, Yes, there's a point, but the issue is that if I'm going to be back into this environment that's not conducive to my well-being, then what's going to happen is that I'm going to start really either feeling helpless and hopeless and not wanting to engage and I'm going to be disengaged and, and not want to contribute, or I'm going to want to exit this environment because I'm really not liking it and I know that I can go and plant myself in a different environment that's going to be more conducive to my well-being and the way we do that I think is by certainly in the UK that's what I'd like to see is creating this flourishing education where we all come together we talk about a system so one of my biggest um uh, pet hate is the fact that we have a tendency to look at um, education like an engine and we're trying to make to tweak it and make it rev better but the system is not an engine it's not something physical that we can tweak it's a system that is composed of the young people and all the adults around them their parents their grandparents their friends, uh, you know, the educators, everybody else. And I really think that we all need to come together. So like tonight, this opportunity to all be together and to talk, I think it's really important because that's the way we will see change in education and bring the future of education. And I really want to finish with this image, which I took from uh, the film Harry Potter, because my message that I want to leave you with for tonight is this. I used to believe that I myself, and now I laugh about it because I think it's just really clearly hilarious. I used to think that I, little light, could make and change the system on my own. I tried for seven years and failed miserably. And so this image is drawn from Harry Potter when um, Dumbledore fell and obviously died and all the, the children and the wizards surrounded uh, Dumbledore and one by one, they took their wand and cast and one one wand wasn't enough to cast the light to obviously affect the dark shadow and but one by one they took that light and they made a big difference and this is what I want to leave you with for tonight is this image one light is not enough but if there's enough of us all coming and bringing our light and shining together then I truly believe that we can make a difference and bring a better uh, system and a better education for our young people and for us, these adults. <laughs>